a coalition and for as well as for um, our, our speakers this morning, I'd love to take a pulse of how everyone is feeling. How is everyone feeling? So on a scale of one to five, if you join us in the chat, how are you feeling this morning? Take a pulse of how everyone is feeling. How is everyone feeling? So, so on a scale of one to five, with one being I need more coffee or more green tea, to five, which is, hey, I could deliver the inspirational talk this morning. <laughs> what is your, what's the, what are, how are you feeling this morning? Let me know in the chat. Oh, we've got a four. Excellent. Loving it. Loving it. We've got a four. Love that. Love that. I think we're all feeling about a four this morning too. I'm talking to my sisters in the panel and I think we're about a four. Oh, a five plus Carla. Loving it. Jasmine's got a four. Wow. Three, Richie. Come on now. We're going to, by the time you're finished here, you're going to be a five. And Mark, you've got a five. We got a five for you. Loving it. Loving it. Got a fart. Five. Okay. Just for fun. Just for fun. And just to be honest, everybody, who's in their pajamas this morning? Who's still in pajamas? Who's still in their pajamas or pajamas on the bottom? Tell me. Let me know. <laughs> or are you in are you in your jogging pants and your loungewear? What are you wearing this morning? Both. Let me know. Just for fun. All right, so we've got fives and fours. We've got Teresa's got a three and a half. Jogging pants, thank you, Teresa, jogging pants. Okay, I got jogging pants on too. Unfortunately, they don't match my t-shirt. <laughs> jogging pants on too. All right, I'm in both NCBW and <laughs> Sorry, Sonia. That's right, loungewear. Yep, pajamas. That's right. And that's exactly what we want this morning. That's exactly what we want. That's what this is all about. Typically, the um, NCBW Manhattan chapter uh, uniform is pearls and all black and pearls. And this morning, we've got on our black t-shirt. And the purpose of this morning is to relax, relate, and restore sweats. All right. Loving it. Loving it. Okay. We are at our 11 hour, our, our five minute mark i'm just going to start my opening remarks as more people join the program my name is janera gaston and again good morning to you i am the first vice president of programs and co-chair of the health committee for the coalition of 100 black women manhattan chapter on behalf of our board of directors our members and the health committee i welcome you to our program this morning slay your stress relax relate restore and as the title indicates, what we hope this morning is that you will, um, you will believe that this is a really safe space for you to just relax for the next two hours. Please go again, for those who are joining, go get your beverage of choice. You do have some time while I'm giving the welcome to get your coffee, to get your tea, your green tea, or to get whatever beverage of choice you're looking, you're, you're, you like. Um, we are not judging here. We want you to be able to relate to the messages that we are bringing to you this morning. And we have some awesome guest speakers and presenters to do that. And then finally, we want you to walk away restored. If, if, if not for the rest, it will hopefully for the rest of the day, but indeed maybe for the rest of the week, maybe the rest of the month, hopefully we want you to take away something that's going to, 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 to inspire you. Okay, and something you can read back and say, I heard that on that call and, and it really inspired me. So with that, I wanna thank the National Association of Health Services Executives, New York Regional Chapter, and the New York Black Nurses Association for um, joining us this morning and partnering with us on this uh, morning of, of, of self-care. 
really. Um, I'm very excited about seeing and hearing from our guest speakers this morning, one of whom, uh, Tiffany Hamilton, is co has come back to us. Uh, she was with us last year. She was a highlight of that program, and we've brought her back for this program. We are so thrilled to have her. So thank you, Tiffany. And we have Namisha Joyner with us this morning, who's going to be doing our chair yoga. Now, Namisha is our first time with us, but she has joined us for other programs. She's been at other Slayer Express programs, and she could not wait could not wait to join us this year <laughs> and bring us bring us her own her own um, uh, uh, gifts this morning. So uh, just before we get um, started, and I'm going to ask um, one of our partners to bring welcoming remarks, let me just tell you a little bit about the Coalition of 100 Black Women. Uh, the national organization was incorporated um, uh, 40 years ago, and the vision of the organization was that Black women and girls will live in a world where socioeconomic inequity does not exist. Okay, we advocate on behalf of black women and girls to promote leadership development and gender equity in the areas of health, um, education, and economic empowerment. Our chapter was chartered in 1992, and so we're celebrating this year our 30th anniversary. Um, and so we're so happy that you can join us um, for not just uh, uh, this program, but but of course, all of our programs that celebrate our 30 years of, of important work. And now let me turn it over to our partner, uh, uh, Jelaine um, Fergus, uh, who is the president of the National Association of Health Services Executives, New York Regional Chapter, who will bring us greetings from that organization. Let me just Unmute. Oh, I got it. <laughs> okay, great. There you go. Well, there I am. I'm just going to have to match that energy. See, this is why we partner, because this is the reason why your organization is matching and actually is like minded with our vision and mission as well. So, my name is Jaylene Fergus. Um, like she said, I'm the president of the National Association of Health Services Executives, New York Regional. I'm also the human resources manager of the Department of Surgery at Columbia University, Irving Medical Center. Now, since she shared a little bit about, uh, you know, 100 Black women, let me share a little bit about NASI. NASI is, and that's the short term for, <laughs> for the National Association, um, is a nonprofit association of Black healthcare executives founded in 1968 for the purpose of promoting the advancement and development of Black healthcare leaders, professionals, and elevating the quality of healthcare services rendered to minority and underserved communities. So this is a service that I have been looking forward to all month. <laughs> I need it in terms of self-help care for myself. It is so timely. This is absolutely wonderful. And I'm really hoping our members are going to enjoy this because they have joined as well. And if you're interested or you want to know more about NASI, be happy to share that information with you as well. So without further ado, we're thrilled to partner. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm looking forward to more collaborations because this is actually one of many we've done with 100 Black women we're going to continue to do. So looking forward to this today's program. Thank you. Awesome. And now I'd like to turn it over to our co-chair of the Health Committee, Star Cruz, who will introduce our keynote presenter. Well, thank you, Janera. And thank you, Jeline. Uh, it is absolutely my pleasure. And welcome, everyone, as we get started into our today's program, uh, excuse me, Slay Your Stress, Relax, Relate, Restore. It is with my pleasure that I introduce our keynote speaker, Ms. Tiffany S.W. Hamilton. Um, Tiffany is a managing director of Transformation Solutions, a work group, and an inaugural chief diversity officer of Patient University. I know you have your work cut out for you, girl, but I know you do it well. Most recently, she was uh, and, and most recently prior to that position, she was the inaugural chief diversity officer of Westchester County, excuse me, Westchester Community College. While there, Tiffany developed and ex executed a plan on that leveraged data analysis to discern and address equality gaps in student achievement while refining the hiring process and implementing cultural competencies. Um, she was, her main objective was to increase awareness of unconscious bias and provide strategies more so for effective communication engagement. 
And as was mentioned earlier, Ms. Hamilton was here last year and it's with our pleasure to bring her back. So I know she's going to help us really talk through that effective communication, that restoring of our own well-being, and then also to engage. So Tiffany, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you so much, Astara. I really, really am excited to be with you all today. And let me be clear, whether you are on Facebook or Zoom, the chat is open and the same energy I get from you all will be the same energy I put into our little bit of time together on today because I came equipped with some tools to help us collectively slay our stress. If you're with me, mm-hmm. I hear you even though you're on mute. And some of you who are, listen, because this is going to be a time for us to gather, to pour into one another. And so I'm delighted to be with you on today, excited to slay our stress, relax, relate and restore. I definitely have to thank the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, the Manhattan, Manhattan chapter, specifically the Health and Wellness Committee for continuing to partner with other organizations such as NASI and uh, the National Black Nurses Association and all of the other groups that you've partnered with to create this space today. It is critical that in our everyday lives, when we get super busy beyond belief, that we just carve out that time to pour into ourselves and to pour into one another. So again, thank you to the coalition and the other partner partnering organizations for our time today together. Now it will be a bit interactive, a little reflective. We'll give you time back to your calendar so you can take a break to process some of what we're talking through. But if you just stay with me for a while, I am going to share my screen uh, just so you can have some visuals on your screen beyond my face, even though I'm okay with you just looking at that, okay? But again, we are going to slay our stress and have this conversation collectively and together. Now, again, I also want to give kudos to you who have taken the time out to join us in this virtual space, to be in this space together as we prepare again for some exciting conversation filled with a wealth of information and even some uh, skills with our chair yoga that'll come a little bit later. I'm honored to kick us off. So listen up, buckle your seatbelt because we're getting ready to move through this. Okay. Last year, we spoke about unmasking, not the KN95 that we got hanging from our rearview mirror and steal in some of our glove boxes, but the mask that we wear, right? Last year, we talked about being that MVP to make room for what you need, being vocal about your needs and practicing grace. Definitely ask for the recording if you can, because it was a good time had by all. But one of the things that I've noticed coming out of the pandemic is that I see so many of my melanated sisters walking around mask-free, literally, and figuratively, right? I think these last two years have challenged us to take off some of the masks that we're wearing. It has us rethinking and reprioritizing things and mask free feels good. And mask free feels good both literally and figuratively. But what has been interesting to observe throughout this entire pandemic is how the covering of the mouth and the nose impacted our ability to hear. Right. The covering of the mouth and the nose impacted our ability to hear in the beginning of the pandemic. It was hard to hear because the voice was obstructed by the mask. So our ears had to naturally adjust to lean in a little bit more. Right now, for someone in this Zoom room, that was your keynote right there. You can't hear the right voices because there's so much stuff in the way. Slay that stress, sis move that stuff. If you really want to slay that stress, for some of you, it's just a matter of moving some of that stuff out of the way. But I digress. Let me get on script. We talked about being maskless and how it frees our nose and our mouths, but it also impacted or enhanced our ability to see things. I know when some of the COVID-19 regulations were lifted and folks started, you know, outside started opening up and we started gathering together, it was good to take that mask off because you felt like all of your senses could now be level set. Uh, but, but the thing about being maskless 
is that if we focus on all of our senses being level set, you're able to see things a little bit clearly, you're hearing things differently. That last two years that we've gone through, we've been able to level set our senses, but also reprioritize what we are focusing on. And so for me, as I navigate through the pandemic, I'm starting to walk outside a little bit more. I'm starting to explore the neighborhood a little bit more, making that time to just get away from the computer, get away from the noise and engaging with people a little differently because we haven't been able to do that. And for some of us, we're still limiting our impact and connection with one another. And so for me, when I think about slaying my stress, I'm going to guide our conversation just through three everyday regular things, the web, the work, in the well. Now stay with me because for me, you know, it's it's good to have your takeaways that you can remember some things. And so for our conversation last year, we talked about the Damascus experience, right? Taking the mask off li literally and figuratively. And so this year we're going to talk about slaying your stress through the WWW. Nope, not the internet, but through the web, the work, and the well. And so if you stay with me, I want to talk with you about the web. And you know, the, the, the thing about being maskless and walking outside, I'm looking at nature and I'm seeing things differently. But I, I recall going on our first vacation, kind of coming out of the pandemic, we were taking a hike through the rainforest. And that was an experience because I was in awe of the intricate detail of all that was around me. I didn't have a mask. I didn't have my phone. I didn't have, you know, work pinging me and my Apple watch going off. I went into that rainforest with none of that. And I was able to look at the intricate detail of all that was around me from the details in the bark of the tree to the various lines in each of the leaves. I was astonished at how the plants grew to kind of create a canopy. And what the tour, tour guide told us was that the leaning of the various trees was due to them growing to their source of light and to protect their sustainability. The trees were growing with the lean because they were leaning towards their source of light and their source of sustainability. Yep, for another sis in the room, that was probably your keynote. You wanna slay your stress, you gotta lean into your source. Huh? You got to lean into that source of what's feeding you and what's going to sustain you. For some of us, we we've, we've leaned away from the source, but whatever that source is, but I'm a, I hear you, Tiffany, get back on script. But sis, if you want to slay that stress, you got to lean into that source. If you're with me, mm -hmm. I hear you, even though you're on mute. Back to the rainforest. The beauty in the detail of that space was beyond comprehension. And just when I thought I couldn't take in anything more beautiful, I saw it. I saw the web, the most detailed web elaborately woven between two trees. Now, let me pause for station identification real click, real click, clear and real quickly on any given day. If I see something like this, I'm probably going to spaz out, probably stroke out because for me, in my mind, the owner of said web is not too far away. OK, but because I was in her house and in her neighborhood, there was a calm that I felt that allowed me the agency to observe, admire and move on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, that might be another message you want to want to tweet right there. Stop trying to take residence where you're merely supposed to rest. Huh? Some of us are trying to take up residence where we're really required to just take a rest. So for me, I was able to observe, admire, and move on the, in, uh, in my observation of this beautiful web. But what we know about spider webs on the surface, whether the cobwebs or otherwise, is that often they can be a nuisance, right? You see them and you're like, oh, they're either a reminder that we need to clean or they can be a nuisance. But what we don't know or what we don't highlight is that scientifically webs are made from some of the strongest silk. If you think about the golden orb spider, for example, their silk is some of the strongest silk. It's even stronger than steel. Think about that. That little bitty old spider made this intricate, detailed web from material that actually is stronger than steel. If you think about it, the spider, despite its size, carries that beautiful silk in their abdomen, in their womb, and their ability to produce something despite their size, 
despite their situation, stronger than steel. And even more amazingly, it is 50 times as light. So wait a minute, you can produce something as strong as steel, 50 times as light, and then to top it off, human beings in science have yet to be able to create and reproduce said silk. Think about that. Something as small as a spider is able to produce silk stronger than steel, 50 times as light, and even with the help of complicated machines and chemicals and humans, we still can't make material that strong, stretchy, and light. I feel like I got some spiders in the room today because when I received the invitation, I knew that it was going to gather women of color who just might actually be spiders, gifted with the skill of survival. There's someone in this room where there's something inside of you that you've produced in your mind that you've got to get out, something stronger and bigger than you could ever expect. But in order to get it out, you got to slay that stress. You got to move the things out of the way, lean into your source and recognize that you've been gifted with the tools and the ability to be bigger than anything that anybody can create on their on their own. Hello, somebody. Someone needs to walk away with the strength and the spirit of the spider. And see, one of the most paralyzing things one can do is become aware of the gift and the stuff that you have to contribute to this space and then do absolutely nothing about it. Now, don't get me wrong because this is a safe space and I'm very transparent. I found myself doing that before. It even tries to keep up every now and again. I know I, I have some gifts and I know where those gifts should be shared, but sometimes the self-talk and the self-deprecation gets in the way. Sometimes the priorities and the desire to support and uplift others get in the way. But guess what? Just like that spider, you were gifted with something not only to create something to be observed and admired that's beautiful, but something to all, you've also been gifted with something that is supposed to sustain you. So what good is a gift that you're giving to others if you don't give it to yourself? Again, I find myself doing that. It creeps up every now and again. I'll concentrate and attempt to control things that I have no power or ability or strength to do. Yet I have convinced myself in the privacy of my own mind that I could and I should. Do you know what that looks like? I'm glad you asked, even if you didn't. You ever seen someone walk into a spider web and try to remove it from their space? What happens? What they look, they get to swinging and slapping and smacking and tap, 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 trying to get that spider web all off their face, right? Swinging and slapping at something that they can't see, something that they can't control, and something that they're still exerting energy trying to make contact with. I might be pulling down your neighborhood. I am here to, take, here to say that that's exactly how we look. When we're trying to control that which we don't have the power, ability, or strength to do. We look just like that person slapping that spider web. So if you really want to slay your stress, I'm just here to share with you today. Stop swinging. Stop swinging, sis. Stop swinging at the things you can't see. Tell yourself that you want to allow panic, anxiety, competing priorities or whatever to drive me to exert energy on the invisible or the uncontrollable. If you think about all of the invisible spider webs that you've walked into trying to control, trying to move out of the way. If you really want to center yourself, you've got to stop swinging at the things that you can't see. You've got to stop swinging at the things that you can't control. And here's your affirmation. Today, I stop swinging at the things I can't see. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. Mm. I remind myself every day as a part of my mantra, I'm an answer, but not for everything. Oh, that requires a level of emotional intelligence and even just self-humility to say, yeah, I'm a bad mamma jamma. When the song comes on, I will bust a groove, but I'm an answer, but not for everything. Because that's how I build the boundaries to protect and preserve the space I need to lean into my source. Today, I stopped swinging at the things I can't see. I won't exert energy on the invisible.
And so I want you to take, you know, when we take our breaks and as we go throughout the day, I want to think about the webs that you've walked into that you're trying to control. What are the webs that are invisible, that, that are invisibly controlling and capturing you and you're exerting energy on them and you don't have to. Think about those things and take that inventory. And as you think about the web, I also want you to think about the work. Now, perhaps the spider web and the, uh, the spider and the web analogy didn't work for you. Maybe it even triggered your arachnophobia. My apologies. I should have played that trigger warning at the beginning. Perhaps it even frustrated you because it reminded you of that pesky little cobweb that's sitting up in the corner of your bedroom. And now you're like, Tiffany, after this talk, I got to go get the broom and sweep these cobwebs. Literally and figuratively, if you will. But maybe this example is your personal block. Whether you're an entrepreneur or you work nine to five, uh, let's, let's talk about this place of work and how it influences and may even serve as a variable for some of our stresses. This is a block I know we've all visited, right? Again, if you're an entrepreneur, you're working nine to five. Now, let me be clear. I'm not telling anybody in this moment to quit their job. You are not going to sue Tiffany and Transformational Solutions or the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, the Manhattan chapter. What we want to do is just create a space where you take inventory of your job. And this is what I want us to think about. We'll wake up early. We'll stay late. We will manage folks up. Sometimes we'll manage folks out of the organization. We'll take on projects because folks know that we'll get it done. We've even modified who shows up and how she shows up just to coddle and appease folks in the workplace. We've changed our looks. We've changed our language to coddle and appease those in the workplace. Perhaps you're that entrepreneur and there's a series of things that you do, right? You meet with people, you review products, you test to ensure that it accurately reflects your vision. You work with a variety of vendors to ensure that what you produce meets the standard of your brand. You go the extra mile to ensure that what you put out there is a direct reflection of not only your product, but who you are on the inside because you've given birth to this idea, right? But what if the answer to slaying your stress was as simple as looking at your work. What if I prioritized pleasing me like I prioritized pleasing my boss? See, we talk about being the CEO of YOU, but what if we just set the same expectation for care of self, both mental, physical, and emotional, like we did for the workplace? What if we treated a performance evaluation for how we treated ourselves both mental, physical, and emotional, like we treated our performance evaluations in the workplace. What they say in the church, if you can't say amen, say ouch. Think about where I'm going with this. When we think about all that we do for work to get the rating, to get the merit increase, the extra projects we take on, the people we work with that we know we don't like, but we got to do it so we can get to the end of the road. Hello, somebody. What if we established a performance improvement plan when you weren't hitting the mark for Y-O-U. Huh? Y'all remember that vision board y'all created at the beginning of the year? You remember those quarterly touch points that you were going to have for yourself? Now, what if the workplace made a promise in January that they weren't executing at the six-month mark, at the nine-month mark? We ready to go to HR. We ready to file a grievance. We ready to we we get ready to hold their feet to the fire. Let's take it a step further. Would we tolerate a workplace that treated us the way we treat ourselves? Now, for some of you, you're like, well, I treat myself well. But for some of us, if we're going to have a keep it 100 conversation, let's let that marinate when we think about slaying our stress. Would we tolerate a workplace that treated us the way we treated ourselves. We would dare not allow our workplaces to neglect us the way that sometimes we neglect ourselves. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a retiree, or still working, you may need to have a meeting with the head of HR. Mm-hmm. I saw this on the internet. You know, everything's on the internet. She said, I need to have a meeting about me to get my life together. And this is what I want us to do after we leave this time together today. In that meeting, I want you to have an inventory of all the things that you want to do for you. And I also want you to take account for maybe the things that are limiting your ability to do it. 
And I want you to create a performance improvement plan for yourself. If we would not tolerate it from the workplace, why would we tolerate it from ourselves? So when we think about slaying our stress, we've got to look at, are there responsibilities that I've taken on in this job that aren't a part of the job description that I have for myself? One of the things that we did last year, we took inventory of who's at the core. How do I desire to show up in this world and in this space? Who do I want to leave as a part of my legacy? Right. And when you think about your answer to that question, you've got to take inventory of the responsibilities and the actions and the things that are taxing you that are not a part of that outcome. Because the minute they ask you to do something extra in that job, we talk to HR, we talk about salary adjustments, right? We talk about title changes. Hello. The same practices that we execute in that workplace, we have to execute over the entity that is us. We've got to think about who we need to delegate some of these responsibilities to. And when you are able to do that, you start seeing the stress minimize a little bit. You start seeing that there's time for you to process and you begin teaching people how to treat you. So when you think about your opportunity to slay your, your stress, and as we go into just a break of reflection, I want you to think about the web. Where are we exerting energy to the things that we can't control, that we don't have control over, right? What is inside of me that has been my gift that I've not yet gotten out of me because there's things in the way? How am I being fueled? to give birth to that gift by leaning into the source. And when I think about the dynamic of what I give to my workplace, how can I shift that expectation to me? What's going to be a part of my performance improvement plan? What are the uh, skills and responsibilities that aren't a part of the job description, that don't help me show up in the fullness of myself, that I need to delegate, release, and let go of. I know that I've given you a lot of information and I'm going to come back to you later on today to talk about the well. Because I believe when you think about the web and the work, I wanna give you some space to process that. So that when you go into the chair yoga, you're thinking about, you know what? I'm using this temple. I'm using this body to get ready to do the work of readjusting the description so I can be prepared for that meeting with HR. I need to have a meeting about me for me to adjust these expectations, to reframe the job description and stop swinging at the web and exerting energy to those things that I can't control. So with that, I'm going to pause and yield back to Astara to take us into our first break as we prepare for our chair yoga. Thank you, Tiffany. As always, you deliver. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, and for our audience at this time, we'll, uh, as Tiffany mentioned, take a brief bio break. We know how important it is to kind of stretch your legs and also take care of those other important uh, uh, activities as well. So if, if you can join us back for Namisha at 11.55, we would greatly appreciate it. You definitely want to come back.
Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. I hope you've had opportunity to uh, get yourself together, as they say. Um, and it's, as we did a, seg a segue from our keynote speaker's inspirational uh, talk, she got me thinking about a couple of things. I'll have to say, I, don't, I won't look at spider webs the same way anymore. Um, I am a little freaked out by them, but at least I have a little a different perspective on what those spider webs can actually mean for myself um, as I reflect and continue to reflect on improving, uh, improving myself um, in, in overall well-being, mental state. So I appreciate that, um, Tiffany, giving us that little bit of tidbit. And now, if, 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 if you are all ready, I would like to introduce our next panelist, Ms. Namisha Joyner. She comes to us uh, with a wealth of knowledge and background, over 200 hours certified in, as a yoga instructor. She is an educator and a humanitarian at heart, and, her, and, and also a natural wellness practitioner. But she's also a 20 year English educator. Okay, Namisha, I'm gonna have to come to you about how to write some of these papers I, I need to do. Um, and she's a formal journalist and a writer. Her experience in the classroom instruction uh, curriculum as a teacher for a professional development spans from Texas public schools to three New York City charter schools, where she's also taught yoga and holistic health to grades six through 12 in the Bronx. The, through Whole Body by Sweet Tea, her natural wellness upstart, Namisha has cultivated a style of yoga and health instruction that welcomes and supports all who aim to join her on her journey. Um, in the journey towards sustaining life naturally and discovering one's own fountain of youth. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Please feel free to follow her on Instagram at Sweet Tea, that's at S-W-E-E-T-T-E-A underscore talks. Namisha, they're all yours. Thank you. Do you guys hear me well? You, you might want to just turn your video up. I mean, turn your volume up just a little. Awesome. And do you hear me well at this time? I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming in to display your stress, joining us today for a day of natural wellness. Um, I would like to initiate just with a nice frequency from the sound bowl. Um, hopefully you have a sturdy chair and you hydrated, um, take a sip of water if needed and go ahead and just get situated in your chair. I would like you to calm your mind, take a nice inhale, take a deep exhale, release it, sigh it out. I would like you to erect your spine. Have your feet flat, grounded into the earth, toes forward. Relax your shoulders, extend the neck, releasing that tension, and breathe. Maybe close your eyes and just take in the frequency. Continuing with deep inhale and on the exhale. Continue that deep inhale again, placing your palms on your knees. I want you to breathe in. And as you breathe in, lift your shoulders up, rotate them back, and on the exhale, release, opening the palms and allowing them to drop along your side. Palms facing forward, open to receive energy. Again, spine erected, maybe a light tuck in the abdominals. Shoulders relaxed, inhale again, lifting the shoulders, 
rotating them back as if someone is gently pulling, releasing that stress, pulling the shoulders down, feeling the tension release around the neck, palms open. Inhale again. And this time, lift your heels. Coming to your toes, you're still seated, just lifting the heels. And as you rotate the shoulders back and down, bring the heels back down to the earth. And we're gonna do that again. We're gonna inhale and we're gonna lift the shoulders and lift the heels, inhale. So just come up on the toes, rotate the shoulders back. And as you bring your shoulders down, bring the heels down to the earth, exhale. I would like to begin with the light, some additional breathing. So as we do this, go ahead and place your palms on your knees. And what we're gonna do is a nice warming breath called Ujjayi breathing. Similar to what you've been doing, deep inhales and exhale. Deep inhale, one, two, three. Hold it. And slowly exhale, open your mouth, sigh it out. We're gonna deep inhale again on the count of three. One, two, three. Hold it. Big side out. This time we're gonna add a bit to it. Deep inhale. Hold it. Now sip in a bit more. Hold. Take in a bit more. Hold. Can you take it a bit more? And big release. Ah. Side out big. Release that energy. Release the negativity. Release the tension, the stress. As you sigh it out, you're getting the body rid and you're taking in the oxygen to replenish the brain, replenish the body, to reignite your organs. Let's do that one more time. Inhale. Hold. Sip in a bit more, a bit more, just a bit more, and big side out. And just hold that a moment, feel your body. Continue breathing slowly at your own pace, and just feel your body. Listen to what it's saying to you and breathe. Now I'm gonna come a bit closer to the screen to do the second breathing. This is a cooling breath. It's called alternate side breathing or Nadi Shodhana. So I want you to take your right hand and you're gonna take your two, your middle finger and your ring finger, if you will, and you'll place it on the left nostril. You'll take your thumb and you'll lightly, just gently, you're not squeezing, you'll place it on the right. And you can sort of use your pointing finger here in the center at the third eye or between your two brows as a holding space. And so what we're gonna do is alternate this thumb that's on the right and the two fingers on the left side. Again, this is a cooling breath. So for instance, if you were in a sauna, you know, reigniting your skin, getting your blood circulation, you know, releases wrinkles, you could actually sustain yourself in the sauna by doing the cooling breath, the alternate side breathing. So what we'll do is clamp the thumb down on the right nostril and you'll inhale from the left, hold it, Clamp the left side down. Now release the thumb on the right, opening the right nostril and exhale through the right side. Clamp the thumb down, inhale through the left. Clamp the two fingers down on the left, release the thumb, exhale on the right. And this is a pattern that we'll do. Inhale through the right. Clamp the thumb down, release the left tooth, exhale. 
Inhale on that left side. Clamp two fingers down, release the thumb. Exhale on the right. One more time, inhale on the right. Clamp the thumb down, release the two fingers on the left. Exhale. Okay. So again, that's called Nadi Shodhana and it alternates the breathing on either side of the body. So what you're doing is actually halting some of the oxygen, taking it in one channel to the alternate side. And again, it's just a nice way to, to alternate and it cools the body actually. All right, so I'm gonna slide back again. And we're gonna get into a bit of a body stretch. Hopefully you all can see. I want to make sure you can see my feet. You can see my hands. All right. So again, we're going to kind of bring our seat to the edge of the chair. Again, our feet are firm on the earth. Toes are facing north. And let's take a nice deep inhale. Our arms above our heads. And as you come above the head, I want you to take your right palm and gently grab the left wrist. Exhale, pull the shoulders down. Again, spine still erect, a light tuck in the abs. And I want you to gently take that left wrist and just stretch the left side of your body to the right without leaning over. If you want, you can sort of bring that left arm a bit behind the head if you can, just to get a nice tug. So you feel the pull like around the armpit area, along the side, it's a side body stretch, but you're keeping the body upright. You're not leaning, you're stretching that muscle. All right, now let's go ahead and bring it back above the head. And bring those arms down. Exhale. And now we're going to bring those arms up above our head again on the inhale. And this time, take that left palm, grab the right wrist. And on the exhale, pull the shoulders down again. Releasing the tension around the neck. And now you're going to gently pull at the right wrist. Again, if you can, you can sort of pull the arm a bit behind the ear over the head to get a nicer deep stretch on the side body, you feel it around the armpit. Keeping the spine erect. You don't want to lean the body over. You want to stay erect, upright, keep the neck upright. And just feel that stretch along the side of your body. Breathe, keep continue breathing. And then go ahead and release. Bring the arms back down alongside the body. Exhale. I want you to rotate the shoulder, I'm sorry, the shoulders up again. Rotate them back and release that. Palms open, facing forward. Now we're gonna inhale the arms up again, above the head. Take that wrist again, right palm, grabbing the left wrist. I want you to do a light pull again. And this time I want you to go ahead and bring the palms down, twisting the body to the right. Keeping the arm, I'm sorry, the spine erect. You can bring the arm over the back of your chair if you can. And you wanna keep the hips forward. You are only twisting at the waist. So we're doing, a spine, we're doing a spinal twist, and what this does is begin to stimulate the intestines. Keeping the body erect, yet the twist is in the waist. Now I want you to go ahead and take that right palm and bring it up over and place it on your left thigh. Your arms are now crossed. All right. Now we'll take those arms up over our head again. Inhale. All right, and now you're gonna take this left palm, pull it to the right again, tugging over. 
Inhale again. And now we're gonna twist our body to the left. So we're gonna to continue to move the colon. Again, now I'm bringing the left arm, perhaps if you can, over the back of the chair, and you can just relax your right palm like on your hip or waist. Look over that shoulder if you can, get a nice deep twist in. Again, keeping the hips forward, the toes forward, and breathe. You wanna twist as deep as you can, stimulating the colon. Now go ahead and take that left arm, bring it up over your head, cross it over. Nice inhale and exhale, just to release. Okay. And now I want you to take those arms up over your head again, inhale. And what we're gonna do is a seated forward fold. So with those arms extended up, you should now have felt that stretch alongside and I want you to keep that lower back pulled in. I want you to inhale. And on the exhale, gently fold your body forward, bringing it forward, keeping that lower back pulled in as long as you can. You should have a light tuck in the abs. You should feel the core lightly and you're bringing it down, lower back pulled in. Now go ahead and bring the arms down if you can to the floor to your toes. Maybe you want to take your palms and wrap them around the ankle, ensuring that your feet are facing forward. You should be able to take a fist and place them between the two big toes, like just have a nice space, all right? And now I want you to forward fold and go ahead and drop the neck, drop the head, drop the neck so that there's no tension and just release into a seated forward fold. And breathe. Maybe you can bring your palms completely to the floor, spread your fingers and just breathe. Again, releasing all tension in the neck. And breathe. Deep inhale, exhale. Now I want you to slowly lift the body one vertebrae at a time. Your neck should still be dropped. Place your palms on the knees. And I want you to press into the knees. Press away from your legs. Put in a curve in the back, baby. And then I want you to bring that lower back in, sitting upright. Pull the shoulders back and down. So this is our chair version of cat-cow. I want you to arch that back again. Pull the shoulders forward. Tuck the chin to chest. Tuck the chin to chest, tuck the abs in. Shoulders forward. So you should have curvature in the spine as you're tucking the abs, bring the shoulders forward, tucking the chin to chest. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. And on the exhale, we're gonna bring our bodies upright, pulling those shoulders back. Arching that back, pull the shoulders back and down. Cow. Let's do that one more time. Tuck the chin to chest, bring the shoulders forward, tuck the abs. And back. Arching the back, sitting upright. And breathe. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your body and bring the right leg open a bit toward the right, okay? Hope you can see my leg. And I want you, if you need, slide more to the edge of your chair, bring your seat to the edge. And I want you to take your left leg and sort of extend it behind you, opening up. You can bring, you wanna use the edge of the left foot to maybe sort of press away. Pressing into like the pinky and the heel, and you're opening up this hip. All right, your toes should be facing right. And we're gonna go ahead and open up those arms and look over the right index finger for warrior two, seated warrior two. And breathe. So this is opening up the hip. Breathe. 
You're working core, try to keep your body upright, ensuring you're not leaning. So keeping the waist up, upright, and you're pressing into this left side, the heel, the pinky, if you will. Extend that leg as much as you can. And breathe. Four, two. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring this right arm down to the right knee. So your elbow is on the knee. And I want you to take the left arm, keeping that body upright, and bring that left arm over the ear, going back into that side body stretch. Be certain not to let your head fall into the shoulder. You want to keep that spine completely aligned. So you're using the neck muscles to keep that head up, keep the spine aligned. Extending that arm over the ear, giving it a nice stretch. And if you want, you can take this left arm and drop it behind your back to open up the shoulder. And try to bring that palm to the back side and maybe touch the hip or come down around to the back of your thigh. Pull that shoulder back and let's look up or to the left. Let's look up. But again, ensure that our neck does not fall into, the hair does not fall into the shoulder. You wanna make sure that spine is aligned. Let's look up and breathe. And let's go ahead and bring that left arm back up. If you can, back over to the ear, over the ear. And now we're gonna gracefully bring that left arm down, coming back into the warrior two to the right. We're gonna gently flip that right palm, extend that arm up and come into a peaceful warrior, allowing the left arm to graze the calf. Now you have a side body stretch and peaceful. Again, extend that arm up, stretching the waist, building core. And let's bring those arms back into warrior two. All right. And I want you to now take this left foot, open it up, turn it in. So we're gonna allow the left leg to simulate what we have here going on on the right. So we're opening up for goddess pose, for goddess seated, goddess pose. Go ahead and bring those palms to heart center. Take a nice inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Now I want you to open up those arms again. And you're gonna wrap them. You're gonna bring them together, wrap them. Bring in that right arm underneath. See if you can kind of lock them at the elbows and take that right palm and you can twist. Now your stretch is your stretch. This is a neck upper back stretch. We have tension in the upper back and the neck. You take these, take the arms, you wanna wrap them, connect them at the elbow. See if you can bring the right palm around to bring it inside the left. Now, when I first began yoga, I was here <laughs> the whole time. But if you practice and you work at it, you'll, get, you'll bring that palm around, you can bring that side, and then we inhale the arms up. And when you bring it down, <sighs> big exhale, and it brings out that tension around the neck and the upper back. And even if you aren't able to bring in your fingers to the palm, your stretch is your stretch. So this is, you're still going to feel the stretch in the upper back. And let's just hold that. Inhale, the arms up. On the exhale, bring it down. Okay. Be certain that that spine is erect. A light tuck in the abs. Make sure you're breathing and pull those arms down and you feel that stretch in the upper body. All right, let's go ahead and bring the arms up and release. And now we're gonna to move to the left, to wrap this up. All right, so let's go ahead and bring that left leg out. And now on this side, we're gonna do what we did on the right to the left, we're gonna extend the right leg out. All right. We're gonna come into warrior two to the right. Again, extending that right leg, looking over your left index finger. 
And let's go ahead and bring that arm down to the left knee and come to that extended side angle. Bring that arm over the left ear. Stretching the body, keeping that neck aligned. Serve not to allow the head to fall into the shoulder. Stand upright. You're not falling on with your hips are aligned. Go ahead and allow that arm, if you will, to fall behind your back as much as you can. Maybe your fingers graze the side of your, your uh, outer thigh, the hip, but you're pulling that shoulder back to open up the shoulder. Now let's look over that right shoulder. Let's look up. Look over that right shoulder. Be certain that that neck is aligned. Breathe. I hope this short window of time has helped to calm your body, relax your muscles, 
give you a bit of a stretch that you needed because in that stretch, you brought that blood circulation, you brought stimulation, you released stress and opening up the hips with the warrior two, you erected your spine, you stimulated your organs attached to your spine, even in those many stimulated cat cows. You aligned your neck and your spine. Oftentimes we're so used to looking down at our phones and computers, we don't realize the importance of that erect spine. You know, those signals in our body travel up and down the spine to the brain. And being mindful of that, we replenish those working parts, moving parts of our body that sustains our life and keep us replenished. And always remember to breathe. Breathing is the force of life. Without our breath, we don't live. Be intentional with your breath always. Always sit erect so that you maximize all the oxygen that you take in and need and that you release as much of the, the negativity and the tension and stress that needs to come out on the side out on the exhale. I go by whole body by sweet tea. Whole body. I work on the mind, body, and spirit. Every yoga movement has a, has a healing purpose and benefit from the inside out. Your organs, your joints. Every yoga asana has a benefit. I welcome you to continue to join me. Again, it is so needed in our communities of color. Again, I'm on Instagram at sweet tea underscore talks. I'm also on YouTube at Sweet Tea Talks for Sweet Tea Yoga. And thank you so much for joining in the practice with me today with Slay Stress. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Namisha. That was wonderful. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you all, but I, I felt the stress leave my shoulders and my back. And to think we can do this all from sitting at our chair so I don't know about you, but now I, I, I find it, I'm hard pressed to have an excuse as to why I can't do yoga. Cause she's just have shown us quite a few uh, movements that we can do straight from the chair. So I, without further ado, we're going to continue this relax, uh, relate and restore session with our keynote speaker, Miss Tiffany Hamilton. Wow, that was amazing. And I absolutely find that I am in a different space even when I started, still on 10, but it's a different kind of 10. Um, so as we continue this conversation with slaying the stress, I am going to share my screen again because I want to just reflect a little bit on how refreshing today has been from, yes, the words we've shared in the chair yoga, but just us being in community one with the other and leaving with some tools. So to my sister, Namisha, thank you so much for being the melanated exhale that we needed in this space. I truly appreciate the work that you are doing. And so for those, you know, as we continue to slay our stress, we are leaving with tools. We've talked, albeit uncomfortably, about spiders and their webs and that we need to stop swinging, right? We've asked ourselves what's in the way of the gift that's inside of us that's preventing us from sharing it, yes, with others, but with ourselves. What's in the way from us slaying our stress? Where are we exerting energy to the invisible and the uncontrollable? And then we reminded ourselves that everything we need, like the spider, begins within us whether it's the ability for the deep breaths, you know, that chair cat cow is going with me. Okay. Um, and then we also talked about work and what if the workplace treated you, how you treat you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to review that job description. We're going to have that meeting with the head of HR, but I want to take us to the, just the final analogy, because I want us to be able to come into community with one another and to have a dialogue and a conversation, because I saw some things in the chat that I wanted us to touch on. But before doing so, I want us to end with this concept 
of the whale. And there's going, going to be a video that I'm going to share with you. But before doing so, I want to talk about what a whale represents. See, in ancient times, the whale was both symbolic um, and, and almost spiritual, if you will. Symbolically and often literally, the whale was located in the center of community. And from the whale, the community drew their water. The basic sustenance for life came from that whale. Now, metaphorically, the whale represented all the social resources of the community that were necessary to endure and thrive. Now, for me, my familiarity with the whale came from a saying that I'm pretty sure we all have heard or maybe even used with some of our partners, booze, bays, and exes of the past. You're going to miss your water when your whale runs dry. But if we think about a whale and that his, historically it was physically located in the center of community, I think there's a whale within all of us that we've allowed folks to tap and over tap unnecessarily. I think there's a whale within all of us that we've given from but it's time to remind ourselves to slay our stress that our wells also need to be poured into. And I think a lot of that happened today. So what I want to do is share just a quick video to pour into your well. And I'm grateful that I'm in a community of women of color. You know how we have multiple group chats and I'm grateful to be a part of one that continuously pours into me. And this was shared into this chat and I felt that it was necessary to share it with my sisters today. I'll drop in the, the chat, the artist, so that the credit is given appropriately. But I want this to guide our conversation as we reflect on what we've discussed today. The definition of what a true sis is, she don't just come for your tea she stick around to help you with them dishes. I'm not talking gossip and I'm talking about the type of women stick around to help you process your See, I be hanging out with cosmic chicks. Some got degrees, some spit, some of them shape shift, some of them make Every one of them sacred, none of them make shift. I got one that I pray with. And I got one that you probably shouldn't play with. Cause she stay with the and I got one that I slay with. If we talking glamour and glitz, me and my girls be on goals. We like to get it together. And when I'm not on my toes, she tell me get it together. She be peeping them snakes. Never bring me no beef or no hate. And when I'm lost in my fear, my sis get me back deep in my faith. I look up. And here come my rock with a rock to remind you them beasts out enslaved. We never let time get in the way. We know we both got lives, but we both are hop a boat for our ship when it comes down to the wire. Fight fire and hell. I like the higher in self. And I never go thirsty because my sisters got wells. And we water each other. Sometimes with daughter and mother, when that nurture is needed. Sometimes with windows and mirrors for reflection and reason. Regal when reaching our dreams. We'll take one for the team when the going gets tough. And you'll get your ass checked on your mess, but it's all wrapped up in love. Sisterhood, sold up. Then showed up so many times it's insurmountable. Holding me down and accountable. That's why even if I disagree with her, you never catch it on social media. I'm going to say that again because even if I disagree with her, you never catch it on social media. Face to face, I'm going to go and meet with her. We don't do messy. We grown, grown. We don't send no texts when we vex. We know it's easy to get the tone wrong, and we've been doing this for far too long. Some things are just amateur, on or off camera. That's why even when she's tripping, I never hit below the belt or say words to damage her. On or off camera, we be a classic picture, righteous and ratchet, a well-rounded mixture. My friends be fixtures in my life, lifting me towards the light on my darkest of days. At our age, we clear on what the value be. That's why even when she's tripping, I forgive her. Just as many times as I forgave dudes who didn't value me. She does. Let me say that part again. That's why even when she's tripping, I forgive her just as many times as I forgave dudes who didn't value me. She deserves my mercy too. So I give it freely. We be out here on our netty and seely. Nothing but death will keep us from it. I thank God. 
for the squad I can summon. If I'm calling, they coming. That's why when I'm balling, it's nothing. Because when I'm falling, they ground me. And if I don't say it enough, today I want to say it loudly. I'm grateful for each of you. Even though you're all proud of me, know that I'm nothing more than a reflection of the women I keep around me. Thank you. the well, right? I never go thirsty because my sisters got wells. So when we think about the web and the, the work and the well and our role in slaying our stress, it does not have to happen in isolation. The power of sisterhood can restore and replenish wells that have felt tapped dry. The power of sisterhood can restore and replenish hope when one feels that there's no hope. The power of sisterhood can connect, refresh, and restore when life has taxed us, even unfairly. When we think about slaying our stress, we cannot sleep on the power of sisterhood. What we feed is what will grow. And so who who is in your network is critically important because I should never go thirsty because my sister has wells. And I am grateful that we're in this community and space to have this conversation. We wanted to allow the last several minutes to be for us to have dialogue. And I wanna bring voice to something that was shared in the chat, this concept of selfishness that when we take out time for self, that it is often defined or categorized as selfish. And one of the things that, that I always share with folks and I shared, with, uh, shared before, I'm very transparent. So I became a mother at uh, 14, had my child at 15. She's now 26 years old. And some of you are like, well, wait a minute. You look about 26. That's because I drink more water, mind my business, and I do my chair yoga, okay? But one of the things that we're doing on this side of life for my daughter is unlearning a lot of the things that I, ta I taught her as fact. And one of the things that we're unlearning is answering to what people call us, right? And so when we hear a concept like selfish, I'm, I'm very cognizant and conscious of the words that I use because by mere definition, to be selfish means that you lack consideration for others, concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. So when someone dares to fix their lips to say that my PTO or me carving out that non-negotiable me time is an act of selfishness, do I need to show them the receipts of the communities in which I serve and where I volunteer and how I do for others? No, I just need to be reminded of what the pure definition of selfish is and understand that that's not me. Gotta sit with that for a minute. We use words so often. We clothe ourselves in words and titles that often we aren't familiar with the true definition. And sometimes we have to spend time helping folks unlearn an incorrect definition and model the true definition. An investment in self is less about being selfish and more about protecting and preserving the gift that I'm responsible for gifting to this world. When we think about stop swinging and stop trying to control those things that, that aren't um, for us to control, it's important for us to remember just because you can doesn't mean you should. Who am I to rob this person of the opportunity to become who life is trying to teach them to become? If I step in and fix it, I rob them of the ability to acquire the tools and the skills that life is trying to teach them. And here's what happens. If we continue to touch and control and influence those things that we're not supposed to touch, control, or influence, our wells begin to get depleted. And for many of us on this call, we serve as the center of sustenance for our communities, for our jobs, and for our families. So we have a responsibility to not allow that well to become so tapped that we can't pour into the very communities that we're equipped to because we failed to pour into ourselves. 
And so with that, I know the women wanted to create an opportunity for us to have a conversation. I uh, invite you to put any thoughts in the chat or any questions that you have in the chat or any tips that you want to share yourself because all of us have skills and gifts that we've used to get us into these spaces. You know, when you think about the skills of Cherio, you're like, how can I do, how important is breathing? Very. Let's talk about it. Let's equip ourselves with the skills and the tools that we need to move forward. Understanding, you, remembering the web, reimagining the work, and making sure we're connected with folks that can help fill our wells. I know that there's a request for the for Namisha's information to be shared in the chat. Hopefully you all see that in the chat. I'll also drop in the chat the link for the artist that uh, Caleb, the artist who did the spoken word piece on sisterhood, but happy to get into community to have conversation about your thoughts about today. Points of reflection or any questions that you want to pose in this space. questions or thoughts. Hopefully today has been extremely reflective and rejuvenating. I know my back and my colon is like, sis, what you doing? Cause you moving me in ways I ain't moved before. Uh-huh. And even I am thinking about Tiffany, don't mess around and pull a you on you. Mm-hmm. Let's look at that job description, move some things off that plate and slay that stress. So with that, I am grateful to the space and the community that's been created today. I definitely want to yield. I know we have closing remarks from our New York Black Nurses Association, but again, we are around if there are any questions that you have or content you want us to cover. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tiffany. I, I'm 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 almost speechless. I couldn't even get my I couldn't even unmute myself. <laughs> so I I was so overcome. Namisha, I echo all the other remarks. My body is feeling amazing, and I don't know about some of you. And I'll just be completely transparent here. Sometimes when I have coffee, I'm just like all jittery. And you know what you need is water and yoga. Honestly, it just can keep it can get you going like nothing else can. A little stretching right uh, uh um uh rehydrating so namisha you just, and and let me just say this namisha your background sometimes i got just caught up just looking at your background i'm looking at my own background you see i got it blurred here because you don't want to see what's behind me but i can tell you that even in setting Misha up and preparing for this in the production i just couldn't get over the beautiful background that she has and how relaxing it looks it just is is something to behold. So Namisha, thank you so much for giving giving us the the yoga and the experience and just the peace. Um, so I can just go on and talk and talk and talk and talk. But um, I, I um, wanted to definitely do two things. One, as I bring on our um, our other partner, the New York Black Nurses Association, for um, their closing remarks, final comments. Um, I'd lost. I just like to check in on the pulse. I want to take the pulse again. So at the beginning of the program, I said, you know, on a scale of one to five, how are you feeling? Um, and, you know, the one was, I need more coffee. <laughs> and the five was, I could give this inspirational talk today. How are you feeling now? On a scale of one to five, how are you feeling now? Or again, you know, you can just put in some additional comments on on uh, 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 the presentation and the morning's program. And right now I'm gonna bring in Marcia Ski. Marcia is uh, an, again, a partner from New York Black Nurses Association who bring us uh, closing remarks. Marcia. Hi everyone. I'm a five <laughs> right now. I am feeling exceptionally relaxed, which is uh, not easy. <laughs> right. Uh, and I want to thank everyone who put themselves out the way they did. I exception spe specifically, I'm happy about the 
video regarding sisterhood. Mm -hmm. um, people want to know why you might want to have an association called the Black Nurses. Well, uh, when you are a group of people with specific needs and, and communities with specific needs, you have to have people who understand the needs and are willing to do what it takes to meet the needs. So in 1971, we were established as a chapter under the National Black Nurses Association. Well, we really preceded them. We were incorporated prior to the national, but we are under the umbrella of the National Black Nurses Association. We have RNs, LPNs, and students, which is not necessarily what uh, the nursing uh, programs have. So we look at the LPNs, we know where a lot of LPNs begin as uh, nurses. And so we try to be the sisterhood that's needed. That's needed. And uh, we want to be sure that everyone knows that right here in New York, we have our New York chapter, the oldest chapter, and um, we reach out to each other. We reach out in partnership with people like the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, if you know a nurse, a, a, a student nurse, an, an LPN, an RN, let them know about us. We are as easy to find as nybna.org. So um, today we looked at our health and who else need more health than the nurses. I'm telling you, we're the ones that she talked about before. We're the ones who work all the time, don't go to the bathroom. We're the ones who are all the time looking out for our, our other nurses and definitely our patients and the community. We do not stop thinking about the community as well. So we want to be, uh, to let you know we exist, we partner with people who are concerned about health. And Nasi, we know about you. Uh, <laughs> and we just want to thank the National Coalition for helping us to stretch out some of those concerns. Remind us to drink our water and go to the bathroom. <laughs> we want to be the ones that are here for you if you need someone to talk about healthcare issues. But today was for us. So there are a lot of us on here. Want to thank all of you who came on. Want to thank the speakers for what they have done and telling us about the web that we have within and about looking at ourselves. And I hope this has been a good time for everyone. It certainly was for me. And I'll bet you my chapter folks will say the same thing. So thanks to everybody. Oh, our Excellent. president is on, uh, Dr. Rose Ellington Murray. She's on here too. She happens to be a reverend and a nurse. <laughs> so we thank you all. All right. Well, thank you so much, Marcia. And I yeah. think that's a really important um, point to make. We have NASI here. We have Black nurses here. In the last two years or more, right? These folks have been crucial to our community. These folks have been on the front lines of making sure our community got the health it, health care it needed. And these are the folks who are the heroes and sheroes. So, you know, and I didn't think of it until now, and, and thank you for making that point. But I'm hoping that, you know, you all, thank you so much for your service, first of all. And, and I'm really, I do hope that um, this, is, this has been restorative for you, at least for the last two hours. Thank you so much, both, for, for being part of this. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry it didn't dawn on me before to say, hey, of course, of course, this makes total sense. But thank you so much. Um, and now I'm just going to turn it over to Ronzetta Robinson, who is a member of the, of the organization, and she will just give us um, the closing remarks from NCBW Manhattan. Ronzetta? I had an amazing day. I'm at, I, I can't even give you a number because I just feel overwhelmed. 
thank you so much for attending Slay Your Stress with the National Coalition of Hunter Black Women in Manhattan. Thank you to our partners, the National Association of Health Services Executives, and to the National Association of Black Nurses. Thank you to our amazing presenters. Tiffany S.W. Hamilton and Namisha Joyner. I hope to see you both next year because this is an amazing addition to last year. So I cannot wait for next year. You're going to see a um, survey, a poll in the chat. And so that will be launched too soon. It is a short poll. Please complete that. And then we always ask at the end of our program, and let you know that your support of mm. NCBW Manhattan is greatly appreciated. We ask that if, if it's in your heart to donate to us today, um, your tax deductible donation will provide the resources to help further our mission, especially for black women and girls. But we can't do that without you. Need you to donate now. Your donation supports programs and activities such as educational and entrepreneurial mentoring programs, college preparedness workshops, STEM education and development you workshops. Can you can eat privileges. Oh, my co-host. Workshops okay, all right, okay, on nutrition okay, and exercise for children and parents, raising cancer prevention awareness and access to cancer care in underserved communities financial literacy and family wealth building workshops, and much more. Our next program on May, 5th, on May 12th is called Black Women Keep Writing. Advocate for the change we need, learn to write an op-ed. And that's gonna be May 12th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Led by Pamela K. Johnson. She will be our speaker that evening. So please go on to our site, the National Coalition of 100 Black Women Manhattan Chapter, and register for our May 12th event. Again, thank you so much for your attendance, participation, support, and sisterhood. I appreciate you all. All right, fantastic. Okay, thank you all so much. I see we're having, we have some great, oh my goodness, wow, look at these. Our poll is, is going really, really well. It, it, you know, it's just an outstanding job. Outstanding job to our presenters, of course. Outstanding job to our team that worked really hard on making this um, the Relax, Relate, Restore event. Um, and, and, and thank you to you all for participating and staying with us. We did not lose a person throughout the entire presentation, all the presentations. So again, thank you so much, everyone. Um, we, we hope that, you know, again, you're taking some of this inspirational messaging along with you. Um, and I, it is my pleasure to give you what looks like about five minutes back on your day. Enjoy the day. It's a beautiful day here in New York. Um, be blessed, everyone. Thank you so much.